Good morning. Are you feeding your baby? That's so cute. Oh, you're doing such a good job, Hazel. In the days following a kidding, what we do is make sure, first of all, that mama is doing well. So we wanna make sure that she doesn't have a temperature, that she passed the placenta. So far, she's good on both of those accounts. And we're just making sure that the baby's nursing she's producing enough colostrum in the beginning we're also saving some of the colostrum because we want to keep it for any future emergencies and since she only has one little baby she has plenty today we're also going to give hazel a b12 injection which is just kind of a way to help ease stress and help give her lots of energy then she gets her herbal dewormer because parasites can sort of spike after a stressful event like a kidding or traveling. Do you want some? It's good. There's some hay on it. It's good. No. <laughs> she oh my gosh. It's oh, good. She does. It has peanut butter in it. It's kind of good. <laughs> and then finally we give mom and baby both probiotics. This just helps make sure that they are as healthy as possible, that their digestive system is working properly. OT. Only, only a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. Only a tiny bit. Almost, it's almost better if I put it on my tongue, or on my tongue, on, on your, your tongue. tongue. I mean, <laughs> I mean, put it on my finger and put it in his, on his little tongue. Oh. I know. Sorry, I gotta wipe it on there. Come here. I know. I know. Is that yummy? <laughs> eat it. <laughs> Just letting it sit in his mouth. <laughs> you gotta, he'll but, eat it. He's saving it for later. Oh, Ote. That's pretty much it for the first few days. After that, it's just exploring and getting the baby um, familiar with the outside world. Come look at the grass. Mom doesn't care. Mom wants you to go out. Come on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there you go. Whoa, exciting grass. Look at all that grass. <laughs> So he looks pretty dark right now, but I think he's got some chocolate hues yeah. in different lighting. So I think that he will definitely turn chocolate like his daddy. Yeah. Who is that, Winston? Uh-oh, another buckling. They always do the funniest things when you're not filming. I'm just doing little hops and we never get it. Oh, Rare! I finally got a little go. hop. It loves to be scratched. Do you love it? Because Ethan has his shirt on inside out, but he says that's on purpose. Yeah. So he meant to <laughs> Okay, okay. Four babies. They're the last ones to eat. We'll always the have to wait. The baby's in Willow. Oh, Willow. <laughs> oh, they get treats. Better hurry, girls, before the other ones run over. They're like, hey. <laughs> It's so funny how they all have a different herd order and it's not necessarily age. Yeah, like it's, it's just... It's just whoever has the most aggressive tendencies basically. Because Winston is kind of a brat. Like he is very aggressive to everybody else. I mean not like super mean but just sort of like he's the one that gets to eat first. Yep. What are you doing? Are you by the bucks again? Get over here. Come on, Luna. That chicken has one feather coming out of his butt. <laughs> this is the one that molted, but then now it's growing back. And it's she <laughs> she actually looks really good. These meat chickens need to be... uh all those roosters. I know. Four roosters. Four roosters oh out of God. that. Four roosters. 
mustard. Is that crazy? These are the meat chickens, the eggs that we put under kiwi and kiwi sat on and hatched and raised up. And now they're definitely ready to butcher, but we still haven't done it because it's been too hot outside to do that. So um, they've just been living out a longer life than normal. And there's a ton of roosters, so. And this mother and daughter, they're inseparable. They're careful not to sit on the stump. They sit oh, yeah. beside the stump. I honestly think Tilly gets a little annoyed that Tatum's so attached. Because <laughs> she kind of bites at her sometimes and is like, leave me alone. See, this is the difference between Tilly and Tatum. Tilly doesn't really have spots. Tatum has spots. Oh, yeah. Hi, how are you doing? Hmm? So pregnant. Fern's getting really big. Oh, oh gosh. You're going to be big. You're going to have lots of babies. Oh, goodness gracious. You're so pretty. Got a big belly. Remember when we sprouted and prepped those potatoes about a week ago? Well, they are ready to be planted. We already prepped the soil last month, so all I have to do is bury these little potatoes. We can grow potatoes twice a year in Arizona, and so this is our second time. It works out really well because I'll plant them now in October, and then they'll be ready in January, just in time for us to replant another batch of potatoes. I just need a cellar to store all the potatoes, but in the meantime, we'll just work with what we have. And so after we bury them pretty deep, about four, four to five inches deep, we'll cover the whole bed with a little bit of cedar wood chips to help keep pests away and provide a little bit of insulation. And now we wait for our potato plants to grow. Oh, it's okay. You got two <laughs> white fangs. I cannot believe that. So we have no choice, either white fang or <laughs> twilight. So as you guys know, Ethan is really obsessed with twilight. Uh. And, <laughs> actually, just we are. Me and Lydia and Kevin. Kevin kind of likes it too. You like yeah. it? I kind of like it. Um, so we just realized that this little buckling has fangs on his face and he was born on October 1st so like Halloween month we twilight. have to do a twilight name who's your favorite twilight character mm, none of them <laughs> what all of them I think Eclipse does he's got, no. he's got like a crescent moon eclipse he does moon. have that I think it's down to the three Jasper Emmett and Edward. So what do you want to be named, huh? <laughs> I cannot believe he has those little things. That is so <laughs> funny. We've been holding him since day one, so he's super chill now. He's gonna be really friendly. Okay, so which one? Is he a Jasper, an Emmett, or an Edward? I'm gonna put a link to a poll below where you can click and uh, vote. Then we'll reveal the results next video. Are you a Jasper, or an Emmett, or an Edward? Eclipse. <laughs> what? Lydia likes Emmett. I like Aro actually, but oh, nobody man. likes that. So. I like Aro. No, you don't. So funny how everybody is so interested in this new baby goat. <laughs> <laughs> they all fight to try to get close to him, but really they just want to be mean. <laughs> they want to bite at him. Oh, there's a little hop. Is that so interesting? You can do it. <laughs> she doesn't want to stay up there, so he'll go down. Well, Hazel, she's gonna come. Oh. Yay! <laughs> Good job. Okay, guys. We are ready to do the pizza oven base. Actually, Kevin, it's a good thing that it cracked in half because <laughs> this lets us do the base easier. Yeah, it's way better, actually, because it's so heavy doing half at a time. Yeah. That's how they sell them online. Okay, I have a question, though. In the last video, you said that the fire bricks are not good insulators, but they hold in heat. Isn't that what an insulator is? Uh, an insulator does not let the heat transfer from one medium to another. So the heat in here 
can't go through all this because it's got a bunch of empty air and but isn't that what the fire brick does if it holds the heat in no the fire bricks are a good thermal mass that just holds the heat in and it stays for a long time well i don't know what that all means but kevin's an engineer so we got to trust him we've also done a ton of research about the different materials to use so we're we're pretty much experts Okay, looking good. Okay, I think we got it done just before the sunset. So now the actual, where the pizza's cooking base is finished. Now the next steps are to cover this with chicken wire and mortar and extra layers of cement and everything, so. So I've seen a few people say, this is gonna take you forever. Do you guys really eat that much pizza? But the thing is, is that a lot of times you'll see videos on YouTube and you'll see the whole thing within a few minutes and it was really something that took like a few months to do. We show you like the daily progress of projects and so <laughs> it takes a lot longer than you think to finish projects. Those of you that work on a lot of DIY stuff or if you've ever remodeled your house, you know it takes way longer than you think it's gonna take. So this is what it's like to do something yourself. And no, we actually don't eat a lot of pizza, but we plan to not not only make pizza but bake bread roast meats in there roast potatoes and just try to cook with an outdoor oven instead of heating up the house hopefully we like it I think we will one two three four I am not a raincoat here to keep you well, it's that time again. It's fishing season. I know. I guess you're right. I don't know. Did I did I cut them too big? I don't no. know. No. They have big mouths. Okay. Hold the camera. It's really hard. Those koi look Last time it hungry. Was easy. Oh yeah, we got lucky with the koi not wanting to bite it. They're so big. I think that's still too big. No. It's good? It's good. Okay. They have big mouths. Yeah. Am I the fisher? Yeah, you're the good fisher woman. No, I'm not even this anymore. Now I'm going to catch one of the... <laughs> the koi? Yeah, we haven't good. yet. Just got to get it all the way to the bottom there. It's getting stuck. Look, these koi are... Ah! <laughs> this is hard! The weather is finally cool enough for us to sit outside by the pond and fish instead of swim. So today we caught a big old catfish and we're going to break it down and turn it into a dinner. Catfish is a little bit tricky to skin and fillet, but I think I finally got it down. Basically, the goal is to first skin it. And so we'll do that by sort of cutting some guidelines. Sometimes I caught a little bit too, too deep, but that's okay. Next, we take some pliers and we pull. The skin comes right off. And once we take off the head and the tail, now we're ready to fillet it. Now, some people will fry it just like this, and we've done that before. I kind of prefer that method, but for tonight's dinner, I need to fillet it. So, we're gonna work our way down the sides, try to get as much meat off the bones as possible, and we're ready to go. After everything's been washed, we're gonna slice this up into smaller pieces, throw some quick batter on it, and fry. Frying fish always makes me feel a little bit better <laughs> about it. I feel like all the bacteria has been killed. Although I'm sure I could think of worse places than my backyard pond to have fish. We're going all out tonight. We're gonna start by making our own homemade tortillas. 
by using some masa flour, a little bit of salt, and boiling hot water. After the dough rests a little bit, you break off a little bit, roll it into a ball, and throw it in our tortilla press. I like to undercook them just a little bit. I feel like that makes them perfect. And um, they'll stay warm in our little tortilla container. If you haven't guessed already, we're making fish tacos. So we've got the fish fried, the tortillas are warming, and now we need to make a pico de gallo with plenty of fresh tomatoes, a diced red onion, a bunch of cilantro, and a good squeeze of lime. We've got cabbage, and then finally, some cotija cheese, which is the best on tacos. And that's it. Only took me four hours. <laughs> no, maybe not four hours, but I swear, making stuff from scratch always takes longer than you think. Probably filleting the fish took the longest. But here we are with a delicious dinner, and I gotta admit, it feels pretty good to eat fish that we grew right in our backyard. All right guys, thanks for joining us in today's video. If you wanna see the video where we first got little Zorro, our first Hold goat on the farm. You can click right here.